Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled, Neighbor claimed he owns my waterfront property and stole my land. I taught him a lesson and took away their view. To really understand this story, I need to quickly explain the layout of my property. I have a waterfront property and in the backyard I get an amazing view of a river that runs past me and then beyond that is woods and mountains. It's honestly beautiful and for someone who likes nature but wants to live indoors it is a dream come true. Next to me though is a neighbor that has a little less space in his backyard but can still enjoy the nice view. To see it though he would need to face a little towards my property. So while I can look straight out he needs to look at like a 45 degree angle in order to get the view. This is due to a natural hill that acts almost like a wall for the back of his property. He moved in a while back and has always seemed a bit strange to me. Nothing crazy, just things like repainting his house three different times in a single year to different colors and building a shed only to tear it down and rebuild it five feet away. Also trying to tell the neighbors what they can and cannot do despite being new while the rest of us lived here a long time already. Things started to come to a boil when he decided that my backyard was going to be his backyard. I'm usually an easygoing person and I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. When I saw him sometimes on my property at night or even very early, I just assumed he wanted to get a really good view of the sunset or moon and moved over without thinking. That does not bother me too much because I know that it must suck to have half a view when everyone else gets a really nice one. The people that used to live there had my permission to walk over the property line when they wanted to get a nice view. There is not a fence or anything so it can be tricky to know right where my property ends and that one starts. Then he started leaving things out on my property like tools and a pile of wood. I was mainly worried that it would escalate more or that he may not have even realized that he was moving in on my property. The next time I saw him I tried to be friendly and tell him the mistake. Me, hey I just wanted to let you know that this stuff is actually on my side of the property line. I would just really appreciate it if you could keep your things on your side. Neighbor, look, I don't know if you think you can just pull the wool over my eyes, but this right here is my property. Heck, even where you are standing is mine, and if I want to leave things there, I will. This guy clearly was not listening to anything I was saying. For the record, I was standing even further into my property when he said that, meaning he really thinks he owns my backyard. I tried again to tell him that I knew where the property line was and he just shut me down again. The next day he showed me clearly fake paperwork stating that about half of my yard was on his side of the line. It looked like a world map where the line seemed to be made at completely random places for states and countries. I was not going to argue with him and instead I paid to get an actual surveyor out to look at the land and mark where the line was. Neighbor was not happy when the official work showed that his things were on my side of the property line. He told me that he needed the space more than I did and he was going to make sure that he got what was his. At this point I was fed up with the neighbor and decided that if he did not want to play nice I was not going to either. I mentioned before that I did not have any kind of fence between the two properties. That was mainly so the past neighbors could move over and get a good view when they wanted it. It also was the only way for them to get a good view while staying on their property. With this new guy, forget it, I was going to get a fence and it was going to be one of the tallest ones allowed by the town in order to block his view as much as possible. He was warned by the builders who were following the property line that he had to get his stuff out of the way because it was going to end up on my property. He then finally moved the stuff and the fence was done being built. Personally, I found it kind of ugly and I am still thinking of ways to cover it up with bushes or maybe even ivy. The point is that his view is now totally ruined because of the fence and that natural hill blocking him. I wanted to go one step further just to show him how bad of an idea messing with me really is. 
watchtowers are common around here between people wanting to get a view and people trying to get a look into the woods for wild animals. It is not the cheapest thing and something I wanted but put off getting for a long time. This was the perfect opportunity to get it and when I put it on my property I was extra careful of where it went. To do one worse to this jerk, I not only took away his view, but now most of his property was in the shade of my watchtower. He moved here and wanted the amazing view and was left with nothing. He did not take this sitting down and instead started to trespass on my land and I even noticed markings on my watchtower like someone tried to take a saw to it before realizing how strong it was. I had enough and finally took the neighbor to court for all of his crap. I showed them everything I had from the fake surveyor report he gave me to pictures of my watchtower base being destroyed. Even pictures of his stuff on my property before the fence went up blocking it. They could not charge him for trespassing because I had no evidence but I was able to get a restraining order against the neighbor. This way if he did ever try to sneak onto my property again and I got a picture of it he would be in big trouble. Instead of just being fined for trespassing he could be fined or even arrested for going against a restraining order. I don't want to call the police on him I just want him to get the message to stop trying to mess with me. I think it did the trick because I have yet to see him on the new cameras I installed. As for me I am enjoying my life more than ever before and the view is the most amazing thing from the watchtower. Something about looking at water moving and seeing the mountains in the distance can bring me a smile even on the worst days. I just try not to face the other way where I know the neighbor will be glaring through his windows because he no longer gets this amazing view. And yeah ripe stars if you still enjoy the stories about crazy neighbors and entitled people getting what they deserve then I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we are getting closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers as well as liking the video because that would help my channel tremendously. Thank you so much in advance your support is very much appreciated. And the next one is a little neighbor from hell saga and it is titled neighbor tried to make my life hell. When my wife and I moved into our house there was a rental next door. Renter was a nice guy quiet and kept to himself. He moved out after a year and a couple moved in with a small child. Again basically good neighbors. I'm not super outgoing and chatty but when I would talk to them it was always pleasant. After a year they moved out as well and a single woman who was probably in her early 50s moved in. We will call her Nancy. She was nice enough and our interaction basically consisted of me saying hello if she was outside when I got home from work and vice versa. She was nice enough and our interaction basically consisted of me saying hello if she was outside when I got home from work and vice versa. After Nancy had been in the house for a year she mentioned to me during one of our routine greetings that her daughter was going to be moving in with her. I probably said something like that's nice and went into my house. A couple days later there was a pickup outside and Nancy and a younger woman were moving boxes into the house. I never did catch her daughter's name, still have no idea what it was to this day. Maybe a week after that in passing Nancy mentioned that her daughter's boyfriend would be moving in too. He had just been discharged from service in Afghanistan. Again I really did not think much about it other than that it was a small house for three people to live in. Boyfriend moved in a few days later and came with two very large black Labrador retrievers. I never got his name either and this is where the fun begins. So at this point in our lives my wife and I had a one year old and three year old. The three year old had a room at the back of the house with a window that overlooked my neighbor's yard. Both kids still took naps in the afternoon at that age and routinely my three year old would be woken up or not be able to go to sleep because they would let the dogs out and they would be barking incessantly right below her window. So then I went over and talked to Nancy, explained the situation and asked if they could just make sure they took the dogs into their house if they start barking between like 1 to 3 pm. Her response was that it was a small house and they could not really keep the dogs inside for that long. I said I understood and I was not trying to make a big deal out of it but it would be very helpful if she could do that. 
It lasted for maybe a couple days before the dogs were out there barking for hours on end, so I started putting my 3 year old down for a nap in our room or her sister's room since they were both in the front of the house and you could not hear the barking as loudly. Another fun thing about the dogs was the fact that Nancy, her daughter and boyfriend never ever cleaned up the poop in the backyard, so going into a hot summer there were piles of moldy feces all over the yard making it stink. I was about to call the city when Nancy and her daughter went out to clean it all up, which seemed like a good sign at the time. So with the backyard not stinking, I went out and laid about $250 worth of cedar mulch around the border of my yard, which was all flower beds for about a foot from the fence. Where I live, everybody has a fence around their entire backyard. A couple days later, Nancy and her daughter's boyfriend installed an easy set above ground pool in their yard and filled it. Presumably this is why the dog poop was cleaned up. I saw them use it once. For those who are not familiar with the easy set pool, it does not have a rigid outer frame, it has an inflatable ring that keeps it up, but the sides are soft and can be easily pulled down. I woke up one morning and looked outside into my backyard and a swath of my mulch was gone from the border and in my grass all the flowers were on the ground facing towards my lawn and away from the fence. I went outside to figure out what happened and noticed the water in their pool was way lower. It was pretty obvious that the dogs had been trying to climb into the pool and had pulled down the site, letting water rush into my yard in large quantities. I went next door to talk to Nancy about what happened and showed her the damage to my yard. She was actually very apologetic and offered me $40 to get new mulch, which I accepted. I cleaned up the mulch from my grass so it did not tear up my lawnmower blade, got several new bags and laid them down where the water had washed it away. Three days later it happened again, this time when I approached Nancy about it, she seemed annoyed and asked me what I wanted her to do about it. My answer was maybe don't leave their dogs unsupervised with a soft side pool in the yard. That seemed to piss her off though. I had a friend who did a lot of do it yourself building projects and he hooked me up with some sheet metal that he helped me cut, grind the sharp edges and drill so I was able to attach an 8 inch high shield along the bottom of the length of the fence on our property border. While I was installing it, Nancy came out to tell me that it was ugly. I told her it was not for looks and it was less ugly than wood chips in my grass. It worked pretty well too, it was not watertight or anything, but the next few times the dogs pulled down the side of the pool, the water hit the barrier and a small amount got through the cracks, but it did not mess up the mulch I laid down and most of the water appeared to rebound back into their yard. From the dogs running around and their pee killing the grass, the yard had become dirt and the water washing the dirt up against my barrier made a natural basin, so now the water just ended up pooling around the pool and making a mud pit that the dogs would play in and then run into the house tracking in mud and I could hear them yelling at the dogs when it would happen. The pool was down within a few weeks of my barrier going up, but I left it up because at that point I did not want to go through the trouble of taking it down again. Around this time there was a guy who started coming over to the house. I was never really sure if he knew the boyfriend or the daughter, or both. He had a military look to him, high and tight haircut and a pretty muscular guy who carried himself like a marine. I nicknamed him Buzzcut as a way to refer to him to my wife when talking about what was going on next door. He seemed to come over pretty frequently and he would be out back with the boyfriend drinking beers and shooting the crap. It was maybe a month after Buzzcut started showing up that I noticed the dogs were gone. I had gotten so used to their constant barking, I totally tuned it out until it just stopped one day. The next day I saw Buzzcut and the boyfriend show up and start taking boxes out to a pickup truck. I thought maybe Nancy's daughter and boyfriend had gotten a place of their own. For two weeks I enjoyed the quiet and from what I could tell Nancy was the only one in the house. A couple weeks went by and one day I saw the same pickup outside and Buzzcut was moving boxes into the house. Over the next couple days I just saw Nancy's daughter, no boyfriend or dogs, I don't know what happened, but my guess was that they broke up. Buzzcut was still coming over every few days, but the boyfriend was MIA. One night midsummer, there were a bunch of people over at Nancy's house and they had the windows on the side facing my house open. 
The houses are pretty close together and they were being loud and playing music while I was trying to get my kids to go to sleep. So I went over and asked if they could maybe keep it down a bit as I was trying to get my kids to sleep. This is how I met Nancy's sister, Aunt Karen. Aunt Karen came to the door and I nicely explained that I was trying to get a 3 and 1 year old to sleep and could they maybe turn down the music a bit. However, Aunt Karen got all huffy and said it was not 10pm. For context, 10pm is when noise violation goes into effect in my town, you have to be quiet-ish after 10. I said I understood it, it was only 9pm, but I was asking nicely if they could just turn it down a bit. She repeated that it was not 10, so I said if that was how they wanted to do this, I would just call the police at 10 and I left. At 10pm and 30 seconds, they suddenly turned down the music and shut the windows of the house. A few days later I was cutting the grass between our houses and there was a bunch of cat litter with cat poop in it strewn all over the grass on both sides of the property line. I was not even aware they had a cat and while it was disgusting I decided not to make a big deal out of it. A few weeks after the party there is a knock on my door and a visibly angry Aunt Karen is on my porch. When I went to the door she started screaming at me saying Where's my niece's cat? I myself don't take kindly to being randomly screamed at so my response was something along the lines of What the F are you talking about? Aunt Karen said that her niece told her that I was enticing the cat onto my porch with treats and that she thought I kidnapped it. I told Aunt Karen that I had never seen their cat and that we already had three cats so there was no reason for us to steal a fourth one. I asked if it had a name or address tag on its collar but it didn't and I suggested maybe she should call animal control and see if someone brought it in. She demanded to look in my house and I told her no, that if she was convinced I had kidnapped the cat she was welcome to report a crime to the police but I was not letting some random person I didn't know into my house. So she left in a huff. After these two encounters with Aunt Karen I concluded that she was kind of an a-hole. Over the next couple of months as we moved into early fall I had my first two and only two conversations with Nancy's daughter that I ever had in the entire time she lived there. The first was when a storm was rolling in I went out to my front porch to take the cushions off the wicker furniture we had out there so it did not blow away. She was on her porch and as lightning started to light up the sky I said to her wow looks like this is gonna be a pretty bad storm stay safe. She just smiled back at me. The second was the following weekend. I was doing some work outdoors in the backyard, my kids were playing in the sandbox and my wife was out there and Nancy's daughter asked my wife how old our kids were. She then mentioned she was 4 months pregnant to which both my wife and I said congratulations. This literally was the extent of all the verbal interaction I ever had with this woman. Near the end of September Nancy threw a huge party at her house one Saturday night. There were a ton of people over in the house and backyard drinking and listening to music. It was not a big deal and my kids actually went to bed pretty close to on time. Then around midnight someone cranked up the music so loud I went back out and got the attention of one of the party goers and asked them to turn the music down which they totally did. Then at 1am it cranked back up again. I went out back and the party had thinned way out but Buzzcut was back there drunk as hell. I came out of my back door and walked over to the fence and said hey it's 1am you gotta turn that music down. He gave me a hard flat stare. I said seriously it's late and I will call the police if it doesn't quiet down. He was still just glaring and staring at me so I turned around and walked inside. By the time I got to the phone and was dialing the music went off. The next weekend I went to the grocery store early on Saturday morning and when I got back I parked my car in the street in front of my house. A couple hours later I noticed a U-Haul truck in front of my other neighbor's house. I did not really think anything of it, I figured maybe my neighbor on the other side, Linda, had bought some furniture or was moving stuff to storage. Later that afternoon we took the kids out to dinner in our other car and stopped to pick up a few things I had forgotten at the grocery store earlier. When we got back from dinner I noticed people, including my old friend Aunt Karen, carrying boxes from Nancy's house two doors down to the U-Haul in front of Linda's house so at that point I realized they were probably moving out and walking everything down two doors to the U-Haul. 
There was a pickup truck in front of Nancy's house all loaded up too. Not sure why they could not have swapped out the truck for the U-Haul so it was closer. The way their driveway was sloped I don't expect the U-Haul could get into the driveway without bottoming out. I took my groceries into the house and started walking back out to move my car into the driveway figuring they could back the U-Haul closer to their house. As I was walking out my door there was Buscard walking over and yelling are you gonna move your car for that little lady or what? I said, relax man, I am moving my car right now. Nobody told me they were moving. I would have moved it earlier if I had known. So at that point he went ballistic. She came over to ask you nicely to move your car and you laughed in her face. These people have been nothing but nice to you and all you can do is be a total son of a gun to them. There was spittle flying as he went full marine drill sergeant yell on this. My response was, huh? Nobody came over here to ask me to move my car. I don't know what you're talking about. Seriously, I would have moved it. I have nothing against them whatsoever. Buscut went full drill sergeant again. BS, you're an a-hole who went out of your way to make their lives miserable. They are moving because of you. This was perplexing because I never spoke to them other than hello, have a nice day and the brief conversations I outlined above. At this point I was done with this conversation so I just said I'm going to move my car. I've got nothing else to say about this except I hope we never see each other again and F you. So then I moved my car. As I walked from my car to my front door Buscut was still screaming full bore. Not even sure what he was saying but I flicked him off as I walked inside and shut the door. Nancy was fully moved out of the house the next day and I avoided going out there while they were finishing moving because I did not want to deal with them. I never saw her, her daughter, the boyfriend, Aunt Karen or Buscut ever again. I still was not exactly sure what the hell had just happened or why they were so pissed off at me unless it was me complaining about noise and floods. I got some context the next spring though. On the other side of the house Nancy rented were a couple that are a bit older than us called Sam and Jessica. I didn't know them well but we had lived on the same street for years and I at least knew their names and had a few conversations with them when they would be out for a walk. So Jessica was out walking a few days after Nancy and her daughter moved out and I was doing yard work in the front yard. I said hello to Jessica and we chatted for a few minutes. She said something along the lines of you must be happy that the neighbors moved out. I said yeah we had a couple run-ins but I didn't hate them or anything. So Jessica kind of hesitated and then said oh well they told me you hated them and you did all that stuff to them. So I asked what stuff did they say I did? Apparently Nancy's daughter did talk to Jessica quite a few times and stated on multiple occasions that I was obsessed with her and psychologically torturing her. Also I apparently was coaxing her cat onto my porch and feeding it poison laced treats and then when that didn't kill it I kidnapped it, killed it and buried the body in my yard. I threw dirty cat litter under the windows of their house which I have to assume she did and then told Nancy I was doing it. I would act all nice when other people were around but then threaten her when we were alone. Which was extra surprising to me since I'd never been alone with her. Even outdoors whenever I saw her Nancy was around too. I would prank call their house all night. Also a surprise since I didn't know their phone number. I would take pictures of her from the windows of my house when she went outside and I left threatening notes in their mailbox. I was totally taken aback by this. I did not even know how to respond. My response to Jessica was something along the lines of holy crap that sounds terrible but I didn't do any of that. I talked to her twice. I did not even know her name. Jessica seemed relieved and said honestly I don't know you that well but that seemed pretty out of character and I had a hard time believing you did that stuff but you never know. Later I had a conversation with my other neighbor Linda and I asked her if she had ever talked to Nancy or her daughter. She told me Nancy's daughter had approached her and asked if she had any issues with living next door to me to which Linda said no. To this day I don't know if Nancy's daughter had some kind of psychosis or schizophrenia and believed I was doing all this terrible stuff or if she was just making things up to get sympathy but it did give some context around why all of her family and friends were such a-holes every time we would interact. They probably thought I was the devil incarnate instead of just an introvert who appreciated it being quiet at night. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video. However if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist 
which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition, I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel, but also turn on the bell notifications, which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore, if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube, then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.